And by sending the best of salutations, peace and blessings upon his last and final messenger, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are now finally in the last Jumu'ah of the month within the month Ramadan. The month went by so quickly and so fast and so rapidly. Our dua should be the Ya Allah accept whatever little good that we were able to do and please pardon us and forgive us of the evil that we committed within this month. We need to understand that this month of Ramadan is and will always be a guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just as how common sense demands that when we treat our guests appropriately, and we go out of our way in making sure that they have a pleasant full experience for as long as we are hosting them. The guests will have good remarks to say and to make and to comment and to remember about us. And not only that, the very guest upon its return, wherever it may go, back to his family or their family, they will speak good of us. That we were great hosts. We took care of them, we looked after them, we cared for them, we fed them, we were mindful of them. And keeping that mindset in mind, we would hope that this very guest would come back to our house once again in the near future. The same mindset is applied towards the guest of Allah, the month of Ramadan, within our lifetime. That we truly hope that we take good care of this guest of Allah. We treat it well. We feed it well. And I'll tell you what I mean by feeding it well. And that we're mindful of it. We're respectful. And we make sure that we do nothing which would disturb or bring some form of discomfort to this very guest. And that is the month of Ramadan. How could we treat this month well? And how can we possibly treat it unwell or be disrespectful towards it? Simple. For as long as we uphold the sanctity of this month of Ramadan, the nobility and the sacredness of it, by making sure that we engage in additional ibadat, we recite the recitation of the Qur'an, we engage in additional adhkar. We go out of our way in making sure that we make this month special compared to the previous months. And that we must do because if we simply live our monthly routine based on the previous months and we apply that in the month of Ramadan, what difference would that make? In order to make the month of Ramadan special, we need to do something special. And alhamdulillah, the guidelines of Allah and the Rasul Sallallahu are there. That during the days we fast and during the evening, something special about this month is we offer, stand before Allah in Salat al-Taraweeh and then later on in the night, Salat al-Tahajjud. Now these are some of the acts that we can do to make this month memorable, to make it very special. Fasting is obligatory upon us. It's not a choice. It's not an option for as long as we are healthy, sane adults and are able to, we must fast. And subhanAllah, Salatul Taraweeh, even though it's not upon the level of an obligatory act, nonetheless, we are requested and encouraged and highly advised to offer Salatul Taraweeh. SubhanAllah, think of it this way. Fasting is a must. And Taraweeh, we supplement and we Make sure that we end our day well by standing before Allah within Salat al-Taraweeh in listening to the recitation of the Qur'an. 
And the Quran, it really brings us, it, it blows life into our soul. That's the Quran. That's what Quran does. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, nasi wa bayyinati min al huda wal furqan. It's a means of guidance for all of humanity. And furthermore, it distinguishes. It's, for, it's a furqan, that which distinguishes between truth and falsehood. And as odd and as strange as it may be, you know, I, I, I'm compelled to say that at the very last few days we have left, let's offer all of our taraweeh salah. Let's truly do our best in offering every single rak'ah that we can because it's in our favor. Us offering less doesn't harm anyone else. It harms us. And us offering more doesn't bring benefit to anyone else. It brings benefit to us. It's strange when it comes to the world, when it comes to attaining and earning and accumulating wealth, every individual will go out of their way in trying to earn every, not dollar, but penny. But when it comes to earning akhirah, earning the pleasure of Allah, adhering to the sunan of Rasulullah making the life hereafter the best we can, by shaping it today, we seem to have a fallback. We seem to have a shortcoming. We seem to be deceived by the very thought of shaitan that I am content with my faith as to where I stand before Allah in my current standing. I am content with however and whichever type of a Muslim I wanted to be. I've achieved that level and stage. I'm content. I don't want to make any more progress. I don't want to become a better Muslim than I currently am. I don't want to reach the stage of a mu'min. I'll just be content and satisfied by being a Muslim. Subhanallah, there's so much to mention. Even the difference between a Muslim and a mu'min. A Muslim is, of course, seemingly visible appearance, basic, the very obligatory actions and the bare minimum that we're able to do, alhamdulillah, we're classified as a Muslim. But a mu'min goes beyond that. A mu'min goes above and beyond by adhering to all of the commands and then furthermore trying his best to reach the level of ihsan, offering your additional nawafil, going out of a way in giving additional sadaqat, being humble, being truthful, and adhering to the best that you can, however you can, around the clock, worship, worshiping Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst everyone else is asleep. وَصَلُّوا bilayl wa nasu niyam. Who, who offers the Hajjud outside of the month of Ramadan? Very few, a fraction possibly of the community. We need to strive and do our best and hope to become a mu'min, not just settle for the very basics. We do the same when it comes to the world. We want to make sure we have the best of lifestyle, the most luxurious of living and, and, and residence and vehicles that we drive and what we wear, the attire we were in. But for the dunya, it seems as if it's the highest of standard. But for the akhirah, I'm okay with the lowest of standard. Correct me if I'm wrong. Think about it. That's more or less the current case of us. More or less the current case of me. Rather than speaking about others. Why is it that we're content with the lowest of standard when it comes to the deen? the religiosity, the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but when it comes to the dunya, the temporary abode, the short life that we are going to live, we set the highest standard. It's common sense. Shouldn't it be the other way around? I know I'm only in this world for a few short days. You can number them, you can equate them to a few short years. So based on that, okay, let me just get along with the bare minimum because I'm not living here in this dunya for too long. So I'll settle with the bare minimum with the lowest of standard. And I know by default, we all know that akhirah wal akhiratu khayrun wa abqa. That it's everlasting, khalidina fiha, for all eternity. And inshallah for us, inshallah bi ithnillah, it's Jannah. And we hope it's the highest abode in Jannah, Jannah to Firdaus. So if that's for all eternity, I should set the highest standard, the best and the most prestigious of standards because I know that world and in that life it's not a life that's going to be lived for a few short days but rather all eternity so I cannot under any circumstance compromise on that 
But in our case, it's the other way around. There's no compromise in dunya, all the compromise in the akhirah. We're not going to settle for anything, say, less for dunya. But when it comes to, subhanAllah, the akhirah, I'm content. In the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offers us this opportunity to make men's. To, to be able to fill in the gaps and the void that we for ourselves have put in place in our yearly routine. And now in this one month of Ramadan, we can make place that effort into our monthly routine and make up for what we've missed out on. And get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Draw near to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come closer to the book, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How strange. Look at the barakah. Look at the abundance of this month of Ramadan. Without a doubt, without an ounce of doubt, generally speaking for the general public, each one of you, you would listen to the recitation to the tilawah of the Qur'an on one single night. On one single night. And if you were to take the entire tilawah that you've heard on that one night, compare it with the tilawah of the Qur'an for the entire year, what you heard in Taraweeh one night in the month of Ramadan will equal more than what you've heard all year long by listening to the Qur'an. Generally speaking, look at the barak of Ramadan. How is it that in one night, less than an hour or so, within the 20 raka'ah units of Salat al-Taraweeh, you listen to so much Qur'an that you haven't heard or listened to that much in the entire 11 months and what, 29 days. This is the barakah of Ramadan. And if we are able to, and of course, by recitation and by listening to the Quran, Allah promises, it cleanses our heart. It purifies our soul. And if this is what one hour of difference can do, imagine what one day of Ramadan can do. If this is what one hour of time in the month of Ramadan can do to you, to your spirituality, imagine what 24 hours during the month of Ramadan can truly do to your spirituality. Oftentimes, we may not feel the difference. Why is that so? Why so? Is because we're not committed enough. We're not serious enough about our ibadah. Whatever recitation we may be listening to, whatever reading we may be doing, the fasting, any, any additional uh, salah, prayers, it's as if we're set on autopilot. Our mind isn't present with our action. Our mind is still elsewhere. SubhanAllah, it happens to even the Hufad in Surah Al-Taraweeh, Allahu Akbar, and there goes your mind. There goes your mind. And then you have to really force yourself to come back to the page and the very ayah the other half of is reading. And imagine the case of the general public. I think that even then there is a great degree of reward waiting for you because you're still, you've submitted before Allah, you're here in the masjid, Allahu Akbar, you're in that qiyam position, and you just listen to the Qur'an, whether your mind has diverted to elsewhere, whether you're thinking or, or daydreaming or taraweeh dreaming, whatever it be, but at least you're present. At least you're present. And inshallah, there, there is reward for that in return. But imagine if you really put your mind to your soul and soul to the mind. And then you're present both, you know, subhanAllah, as they say, body and spirit. What difference, would, what difference and change would you start to feel? How often is it that people may not understand the Qur'an, but yet it penetrates the heart and it brings tears. They don't know what it means or what the Qur'an is saying. But it, it just feels so emotional. You feel touched. And if this is all that it takes for us to really feel the, the, the spirituality of Ramadan, then what stops us from feeling that way all day long? One common culprit, subhanAllah, could be that we're so engrossed and occupied within our worldly matters that deen, fasting, taraweeh is secondary. I know, I know, it's, I, know it's, I know it's Ramadan, but still, I've got to do what I have to do. It's okay for me to lie from time to time or got to get by. It's a tough world to be in. Subhanallah. And we're, we're still violating the commands of Allah in our daily routine. We may go on about lying. We may go on about deceiving. And we're not mindful of 
the commands of Allah or the, the, the sanctity of the fast itself, then in that case, there isn't much benefit seemingly that we would get or, or at least feel while we're fasting. Rasulullah Sallallahu has mentioned as siyamu jannatun that fasting is a shield. And the ulama go on to mention, it's a shield for as long as you uphold it as a shield. How is it that you, you, you start your fast and you put this shield down and you start to do things against the sharia, against the command of Allah? You're prone to any and all attacks because now you've just put the shield down. For us, it was to be able to uphold it, to respect it, to do the best that we can because I'm fasting. Think of it this way, a thought which just crossed my mind. Say, for example, within your homes, subhanAllah, most of you are old, but nonetheless, I'll give an example of your parents. And for those of us whose parents are still alive, may Allah lengthen their lives and place barakah in their health and wealth and in happiness that we're able to benefit from them for as long as we're able to and that we can and we make the best of their life within our lifetime. And for those of us whose parents have passed away, may Allah make their graves a grave, uh, a garden of Jannah and allow them to be in the suhbah, in the company of Rasulullah in the akhirah, being in Jannah al firdaus Say your parents, they're at home. They've reached that age of, you know, being uh, of seniority, of how old they are. And finally, after a very long, tiring day, they're about to go to sleep and get some rest. And before they fall asleep, they tell you that I'm going to get some rest. Um, wake me up in some time and uh, please tell the kids not to make too much noise so that they can rest peacefully. And you take that advice and you take this instruction of theirs seriously and you'll make sure that there's no noise, kids aren't playing or jumping or screaming and they're just quiet. Why? Because your parents are resting. Mom and dad are tired and they're sleeping, they're resting. We don't want to be a means of disturbance to them. So we go out of our way in making sure for as long as they're resting, we keep it quiet. And in case when even one of our children or someone may starts to make noise, they're sleeping. We will we'll whisper, they're sleeping. Keep it quiet. Keep it low. Why are we doing that? Because we don't want to disturb the rest of our parents. Imagine if we take the same approach in the month of Ramadan, a thought comes to your mind, you want to commit a sin or do something bad or violate something. Don't you know you're fasting? Don't, don't give in to your thoughts. Don't fall for the trick of shaitan. Stay calm. Stay quiet. And you tell yourself this. Out of respect for the fast that you're fasting, the month of Ramadan that you're in, even if a thought comes crosses your mind of doing something which, which will upset Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, tell yourself, you should, you should know better. It's Ramadan. You should know better. It's Ramadan. What are you thinking? How could you? You, you remind yourself. And inshallah, it will work. And the only way it will work is if we treat Ramadan as Ramadan. And subhanAllah, however, you know, whichever manner we've spent this entire month of Ramadan in, still not too late to make men's. Because the hadith of Rasulullah, our actions, they arrive at their concluding remarks based on how we end them. We still have a few short days left. Regardless of how we spent our Ramadan, may Allah forgive us and accept from us. But let's do the best that we can in the next what, three, four days. Next Friday won't be Ramadan. That we need to treat this guest of Allah so well, so well, that this Ramadan would go back to Allah and say, Ya Allah, next Ramadan, I want to go back to his house. What does that mean indirectly? Ya Allah, lengthen his lifespan. Allow him to be able to serve me again next year. Don't, don't we want that? Subhanallah, would it, who wouldn't? Who would not want to have that opportunity of serving the guest of Allah? And Subhanallah, on the day of Qiyamah, based upon the, the Quran and Sunnah, our a'mal, our actions will take an actual form and come before us. I'll mention a hadith. How long do I have? About five more minutes, inshallah. A narration of Rasulullah that when a person will arise from his grave on the day of Qiyamah and he would awaken and see that there is this bright, pleasantful um, individual looking down and staring at him, a radiant face with a radiant smile. And this person, the one who is being brought back to life for the day of judgment, 
is looking and he's surpri surprised and perplexed, amazed. Who are you? How beautiful and a, a radiant face. How you know shiny of a face. What nur? Who are you? And this person would say to the deceased who's now coming back to life, I'm here to assist you. Who am I? I am the Quran. You used to recite me in the world. Today it's my turn to make sure that no harm comes your way. The near message of the hadith. That the Quran will take a shape and form. And likewise, many other surahs, chapters of the Quran will take a shape, will take a shape and form and before Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala to intercede for us. Subhanallah, within our own grave, may Allah protect us from the adhab of qabr. In case if the adhab does come our way, our actions, our a'mal in this dunya will come into a shape and form to propel the adhab away. Salah will come from one direction and push the, the torment away. Siyam will come from one direction. Sadaqa will come from another direction. And our actions will surround our body from around the space just to make sure that there's no torment or discomfort or adab that would arrive and reach us. These are our actions. So point being, we still have three, four days. Let's make the best of it. Let's go into high gear, subhanAllah. You know, if you want to downshift, you want to raise the RPM, do what you have to do. But the remaining three, four days, make the best of them. So much so that what you're able to do in the next couple of days, you weren't able to do in the past previous 26 or 27 days. And subhanAllah, each and every single person, every single one of we can do it. You just have to commit to yourself. You don't need to compete with anyone else, but just yourself. That today, inshallah, you know, khalas, that's it, I'm done. No more khalli walli. I'm going to make sure I recite at least a few ruku of the Quran, give additional sadaqat. And I've, I've told this to people many times before. We're, we earn it, we're living in a day and age where giving sadaqah has never been that easy. Giving charity has never been so easy. Not so long ago, in the past, people would have to actually find someone who's deserving of charity. Take the time out, get the funds together, whether it was gold, silver, dirham, dina, whatever it was, go out of their way, leave their homes, travel, go to someone's house, knock on the door, ask about them, hand them something in person, and then come back home, and before you know it, it's nightfall. In our day and age, it's just a simple tap. Tap. Send. Charity. How easy is that? So commit to yourself for the next couple of days. Today's Friday, inshallah. Give sadaqah. You know, however much you can, in fact, however much you want in return, give it based on that. Because Allah is the one who's promising the return, not me or you or anyone else. Friday, give sadaqah. Saturday, give sadaqah. Sunday, give sadaqah. Monday, give sadaqah. Tuesday, well, um, give sadaqah. And if you see the moon, well, okay, then make sure you give me zakat al fitr. Otherwise, give sadaqah again next day. So, subhanAllah, just. Commit to yourself and inshallah, inshallah, see how Allah opens your doors of goodness and see what true change comes to your life because the promise of Allah was if you spend your month right, you fast during this month of Ramadan the way it should, it's deserving to be fasted, then you'll come out as a changed man, as a changed person. A person God fearing, God conscious. So before I conclude, I hope, I hope this message would bring me benefit before it brings you any benefit. That I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us and that inshallah commit to yourself. Don't don't sell for anything less. Don't sell for anything less for the akhirah. Because the standard there is very high. Set that bar high. All of your taraweeh, additional sadaqah, making sure that you're not speaking ill or backbiting or doing anything which would, you know, uh, weaken the defense of the shield that we're holding high, and that's fasting. Do the best that you can in the remaining days, inshallah, and see the sweetness and the halawa of iman that you'll taste, even though you're not allowed to eat anything during the day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant his friends and his deen. Rabbana taqabal minna inna kanta s-samina alim, wa tuba alayna inna kanta tawab al-rahim, wa ma tawfiqi illa billah alayhi tawakkaltu ilayhi yunib. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru wa tuba alayhi yunib.